Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello. I am Whitney, the lady behind the sexy gloved hands here that are a little covered in mica because I've been working for part of the night, most of the night. Um, I am making, I still have to think of a name for this. Um, so here is some Whitney history. I, uh, grown up in Florida my entire life. I'm a South Florida native and, um, my, uh, I've mentioned it before, my mother passed away in 2015, but even when she was still on this earth, my mom wasn't always um, really healthy. She she unfortunately suffered from um, a pretty severe, ver you know, uh, of uh, manic depressive bipolar disorder and, uh, and schizophrenia. So it's a little Debbie Downer, we don't usually talk about that, but I'm telling you that to tell you this. So. When I was around 17, we bought our first farm in Jupiter Farms and uh, we, you know, we had friends in the area and I became friends with this um, woman. Her name is Maggie, um, Maggie Fullington, and um, on a horse rescue that we were on the board of together. This is lye water going in, lye, raw silk, uh, and powdered sugar and sodium lactate. Anyway, so we were on the board, my mom was on the board of this equestrian rescue with Maggie and her daughter, Christy, and she, Maggie just like, she's one of those people that just, you know, especially as a young woman, you know, just made me feel so loved and cared for immediately. Um, so we all became really close and Maggie kind of adopted me. You know, my mom, like I said, wasn't really, always in the best mental state and you know she wasn't a, a bad mom she just she was mentally ill and that's that's what happens unfortunately so um that's not high i don't want that on high i want on low anyway um so the years have gone by i'm now obviously much older than i was i'm not 17 anymore i'm now uh, 36 is that old man? getting old um and uh her favorite color is red, and she loves red roses. So as a kind of I love you slash thank you for being there for me for all these years, I am making this batch mostly in honor of her. Um, I don't think she can go through all this soap fast enough, so I will be offering some bars to the public. Um, but they are extra special in a few ways. Um, the first is uh, they are being scented with quite a bit of rose absolute um and in jojoba oil which is not cheap and then maiden rose from nurture soap um, which smells amazing together it smells very true rose like and is supposed to behave um i actually haven't used this yet um so we will see we'll see what happens do i want to use this one no, let's use the smaller one um anyway so her favorite color is red she has red everything red truck her horse's halters are red. Everything's red. Red, 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 red. Um, so, of course, this is going to be red. Um, but I wanted a little bit of an accent color, so I decided to pick out, like, a nice deep navy blue. Um, because if you are a horse person, especially an English horse person, um, and if you are, I'm sorry, me too. I mean, I wish I wasn't, but, you know, here we are. Um, navy, green, navy, blue, and, and red are kind of like the traditional equestrian colors that English is allowed. Western people, they get everything. Sparkles and turquoise and pretties. And, and English people, we get turqu we get navy blue, dark red, and, uh, you know, the dark hunter green. The end. So, um, <laughs> that was the obvious choice for the color um, for this. So, I'm going to test my little fragrance concoction here. Uh, in this little one first to see what happens, uh, which is, you know, probably should have tested this in a larger batch first. That would have been smart or, you know, a test batch. You can hear Lisa somewhere shaking her head at me. Um, but it's supposed to behave really well. So I cannot tell any difference. If anything, it actually seemed to reduce the trace. Fantastic. Nurture soap, you are the bomb. Okay, let's get to work then. Um, if you are new to soap making and you're new to my channel, hi, sorry. Um, I'm usually weird, but a little extra weird tonight. Um, I'm always weird when I'm making a soap for somebody I really care about. I don't know why. I get nervous. Is that weird to get nervous? Anyway, I get nervous. 
Um, this uh, is Trial by Fire from Nurture Soap again. And it actually is mixed in more of that Rose Absolute Jojoba Oil. Um, and I added a little touch of gold because, I don't know, I wanted to be fancy, I guess. Just trying to get all this off the spatula. See how much colorants in there? It's amazing. All right, so let's get you mixed in. Anyway, so if you're new to the channel, hi, nice to meet you. Sorry, this is your introduction. I'm crazy. Um, if you're not new to the channel, thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. It means a great deal to me. Um, so while I'm mixing this and making sure it's behaving, which it is beautifully, um, I uh, I guess we can talk more about horses. I mean, I'm, I'm a little horsed out at the moment. Um, if you are on my Instagram, A, thank you again. Uh, it really, it means a lot to me. Um, I've gained a decent following on there and I'm very grateful for it. I think we just hit 14,000 not too long ago and that's, that's really cool. Um, but if you're on there and you see my stories, uh, you will know that it is about to be baby goat explosion season. And that is the best time of the, it's also the worst time of the year, but it's, it's the best time of the year. And one of the things that I get asked quite a bit, you like that? I like that. I think I'm going to do it just in there and then maybe do a little bit of a, a hanger swirl. Let's do that. I've been on a hanger kick lately. I don't know why. Ooh, but I can use my cool tool that I've talked about in other videos, all, the, all these rose videos, but I haven't actually used. So you can see just a little bit of that gold coming through. Isn't that fancy? So fancy. Maybe we can get a nice little butterfly. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, um, so baby goat season. So baby goat season is the best and the worst season. And it's the best season because uh, baby goats. And it's also kind of the worst season. And the reason it's the worst season is because... Um, you know, not, not everything goes really well all the time. And, um, I actually just had a doe who, um, you know, unfortunately we, we ended up losing her. This was, this was actually later or, or later last year. And, um, last year, is it last year yet? No, not quite. We're not quite there yet, but we're almost there. Uh, and... You know, it's one of the things, and, and goats are, they're so tough. You know, they're one of the, they're a prey animal, so they don't like to tell you that they don't feel good. Hold on, I'm grabbing my little cool tool. If I can find it here. Hello, hello, hello. Hola. Oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. Hello. I don't know why my hanger tool is Spanish, but it is. Just go with it. Anyway, um, trying to do a butterfly swirl. Hopefully it comes out. Um, and anyway, so back to goats. So one of the things that I had people ask me, you know, recently is the goats and how lucky we are, you know, and, we, and I am lucky, like don't get me wrong. I am super grateful to live on this farm and I love my goats, but you know, they're not, they can be tough. And when I talked earlier about how they can be, you know, a prey animal, they don't tell you they're not okay until they're really not okay. And there's just not a whole bunch you can do. Um, and that's, it's just heartbreaking. There's just no other term for it. You know, you're, um, I've been working with goats for many, many years and, you know, I can still get surprised. Um, so that's why I guess I'm a little more reverent maybe is the word. I'm not sure if that's the best word for it, but it's the word I'll use um, about my goats and my animals because to me, you know, they uh, they're part of my life and they're part of my world. And you know, sometimes they break my heart, and I guess that's to be expected with anything. Um, but I'm lucky to have this life, so um, it's 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 definitely a, a double a double edged sword when you think about you know choices in life and. You know, I've had goats now for 10, 11 years, I want to say. Um, so if you want to look at goat stuff, you're more than welcome. My uh, herd name is Egido, E-G-I-D-I-O, and I have a website that is desperately in need of updating. 
And do you know why it needs updating? It needs updating because I'm busy playing with soap instead of doing things they should be. Anyway, so we got into ghosts like 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Oh, crap, I think it's closer to like 11 or 12 now. I was young and um, it was a summer camp thing. I used to, so I used to be a riding instructor before I became an RN. Again, Maggie, friend, of horses. And um, that summer camp, we got two pet goats. And I actually got, did I get them from my vet? No, I got the boys from my, my friend, my vet friend. Her name is Eileen Gassoff. I love her. Um, but we got a little boy who was neutered and a little girl. And I loved the goats. They were just like the coolest thing I'd ever had. And um, they were Bonnie and Clyde, because of course they were. And I'll never forget the guy I was dating at the time. He had this really nice apartment over on the water with his brother and <laughs> I, they were bottle babies. So I brought them home and, um, the guy's name was Jimmy. Um, so, and his brother's name was Steve. So Steve, Steve comes home and he's like, there's livestock in the living room. And I was like, yes, isn't it amazing? And I'm pretty sure Steve to this day, probably, you know, <laughs> is so glad that Jimmy and I didn't work out um, because that was definitely not the first or last time. Or that was the first time. It was not the last time I brought weird things into their apartment, their nice apartment on the water. Um, <laughs> I think I brought kangaroos there once too. All of this is 100% true. I know it sounds like it's made up, uh, but it's not. I have had a, uh, a very strange life full of animals. <laughs> So anyway, so Bonnie and Clyde, so that was the first two. Like I said, Clyde was neutered because um, if you did not know this, goats are, uh, how do I say this? Um, goats don't really care if the girl goat that is in front of them is their mother or their daughter or their sister or their auntie or their grandmama or even their great grandma. They are not particular. Um, and so if you have a boy go, and this is something that I've had to teach people over the years because they are horrified. Um, they're like, oh, they would never. Oh, yes, ma'am, they sure would. Uh, so Clyde was fixed. Do I want that there? I kind of want to stuff this one in there, but I have to move everybody around. Anyway, um, so Clyde was neutered and we had Bonnie and then like that was that was really fun. And then they, they grow up, right? Like it's what, it's what all baby animals do. They're really cute and then they get older and they're still cute when they get older, but it's not the same. And um, so all the all my barn kids, because when you grow up with horses, um, at least in my opinion, if you're lucky, uh, you are at a barn and you get to become what I call a barn rat. So my barn rats... Um, who I still, you know, know most of them. I follow a lot of them to this day, you know, even though they're like, you know, have kids of their own and they're off in college and doing amazing things, way cooler things. One's a doctor, you know, the other one's a teacher. Like, I'm just so proud of them. Anyway, so my barn kids were like, oh my God, we need more baby goats. So we got boy goats and then we had, you know, more girl and they weren't registered. Nothing was registered. Just pouring the excess of this in. So... <laughs> So then we had all of these goats and they weren't paper. We had like, I don't know, five or six at this point. And I bred ponies at the time, little hunter ponies. And, um, you know, with horses, uh, you don't know, you know, what you made or what you bred or how that cross turned out for years, right? Like it takes 11 months, basically a year for a horse that, you know, has gotten pregnant and then has a baby. So that's, you know, 11 months to a year. So you're planning a year in advance and then you really can't, you can't really do anything with young horses. And like, they can be really fantastic, but they, you have years and years before you can play with them. Like I have a coming, she'll be four this year. Yeah, she'll be four. A coming four-year-old Andalusian filly out in the field. And, um, she, she has just eaten the last four years, basically. She's gotten some, you know, she's learned how to lunge. She's learned how to pick her feet up. She's had saddles and bridles on her, but we haven't sat on her really. 
Um, and that's because horses need time to grow and develop. Well, goats, <laughs> you can see what your breeding plans look like within about three years. You can really get an idea of what you're doing. And that's a fantastic curve compared to horses. So I sold all of the unregistered stuff and we got into goats and that is how it all started. Um, and I've just never looked back. I really don't breed horses anymore. We've got the Andalusians. Um, I'll probably raise some Andalusian foals, but the focus has always been on the goats. Um, since that point forward, because, you know, they just, they kind of sneak into your heart and then like you love them and they're so cute and then they break your heart and one, you know, passes away or one you really love. And then you're like, I'm not going to have goats anymore. And then you hit more baby goats and you're like, oh, just kidding. I want all of the goats. And that's how you end up with a bunch of goats. So anyway, that's, uh, that's some history, but in all of that and all this time and all those years, Maggie has been right there. So she is somebody that deserves something special and that's that's what these are for so I'm just gonna pop these on the corners and I'm gonna get my piping stuff and uh, we'll pipe the rest of these so thanks for listening thanks for watching um, I know I kind of rambled and jumped topics a little bit tonight and not my usual focus but uh 2020 has been a rough year and I'm uh, excited that it's almost over. So hopefully uh, when we all watch this, it'll be 2021 and it'll all be a better, happier new year. Thanks for watching. On to piping.